So it's about 6.16 a.m. Saturday morning. Just parked at Martin's Fork Trailhead. Um, I actually got here about 5.30. It's almost impossible to get a parking spot here. After about 8 or 9 a.m. And now I'm walking down to where the actual trail starts. It's down the road just a little ways from the parking lot. And we'll be doing rough trail. That's rough as in hard, not rough as in dog bark. Currently about 68 degrees. They're calling for a high today of around 94. And a low tonight around 68. To the right, I believe, is Military Wall, as the sign says. Still not too far down the rough trail yet. This is the second bridge. I believe that is the trail up to the left flank. Let me see. Yep. Sign says left flank. So as soon as you come across the second bridge, the left flank goes up to the left. And this over here should still be rough trail. Trail 221 is rough trail. So the uh, third bridge. That was the fourth bridge, I believe. I believe this is the fifth bridge now. I probably ain't even been a quarter of a mile. I can't think of something different. This is now the eighth or the ninth bridge. The last time I was on this trail back in December, um, only the first three bridges were here. So all those stream crossings, the last five or six or seven, however many there's been, was all, you actually had to walk across it. There was no bridge. So, um, they've definitely done some trail maintenance. And it's made the trail pretty nice. As Daniel Boone Hut goes to the right, so Rough Trail goes to the left. Which is another bridge. Here's an example of why this is called the Rough Trail. So you can't really tell how steep that is. But in that little 15 foot section, it's probably at about a 70 degree angle. So, uh, trail marker means we go that way. That must be just a washout. But the trail definitely goes that way, so that's the way we'll go another marker up here to validate that's the way the trail goes so yeah rough trail is probably something you don't want to do as a first time visit to the gorge um, unless you hike on a regular basis you're going to want to do some uh, definitely some shorter trails that are not as strenuous so these are mountain laurels you can always tell from the flower I can zoom in and get a so you have white petals with like a pink on the inside every single bit of the plant is poisonous to both animals and humans uh, including the flowers the stems the leaves probably the roots um, so people that like to put stuff in their mouth definitely not this plant uh, you can kind of see the leaves here. Right there's one of the blooms that hasn't opened yet. So poisonous. Stay away from it. A better picture of mountain laurel. And let me see if I can get it to focus.
almost to the top now. So uh, still working my way to the top of this first hill, the first big hill, and I forgot about this view until I walked up on it. But this basically leads you out to this, and I know you can't see it because the morning dew. Let's see if I can zoom in and it'll work. Nope. Shame. So uh, basically, you can see the valley. Oh, there it goes. So. You know, it's it's a nice view. So sometimes on this trail you will come to blazes and if you look here to the left looks like there's a trail if you look here to the right looks like there's a trail um, basically what it is is people have created shortcuts so they go to the same place but if you get to a place like this and you're not sure where to go if you just look around so I'm looking at about eye level for this trail and I don't see anything. So I come to this other trail and I look about eye level. And let me zoom in. It's actually a little more than eye level because it's going uphill. So there's the blaze. That means to the left is the official trail and that's the way I will go. You know, on the rough trail, there is definitely some places that are, uh, you've got to use some uh, ingenuity to get up, especially for short-legged people like me. So uh, it kind of looks like a stairway, except for that first step is about uh, three feet off the ground. So what do you think about this sunrise? I know it's probably blocked out nice valley view over here if it wasn't for the trees So I've been walking up stuff like this for a little while. Just kind of give you an example again why this is the rough trail. I started right there at Martin's Fork. Walk up a little bit, you see to the right is a trail going up. That is military wall. And then a little bit farther than that is the left flank. So we followed those streams up. We got to where it went off to Daniel Boone Hut. We went to the left. Um, so I've just come to like right past that red dot up to the left is like a little hump area and I'm right in that area. Um, if I go to the right, it takes me to the Gray's Arch parking lot. If I go to the left, it takes me to Gray's Arch. And let's look at the sign and make sure. Yep. And this is relatively flat for a little while. Um, we're actually on top of the mountain or hillside now. Um, it'll actually start to go downhill to get to Gray's Arch, but uh, this is relatively flat. I've been on this trail uh, as recently as December, which was just six months ago. So, so we can't over there. So there was a uh, hammock camper back there and once again about 15 feet off the trail. I just don't get it. I don't think I've ever camped anywhere that I've broken the rules and I've camped here in the last year maybe 30 or 40 nights. You really 
probably can't see it because of the foliage, but right there is Gray's Arch. This is not Gray's Arch, but it's on the walk down to Gray's Arch. It's a massive uh, ledge. I always think it's pretty cool. On its way to becoming an arch also. Let's see. This is the Graff family, James Graff Memorial. It says, just after midnight on March 21st, 1986, James Graff, in an effort to stop a burning log from reaching this forest floor, fell from the arch above and landed near this spot. He died in the arms of his friends 15 minutes later. We, the members of Jim's family, who make an annual pilgrimage from Cincinnati to commemorate the anniversary, do so not only to mourn his death, but to celebrate his life. We earnestly hope that this wreath will serve as a vivid reminder to all who encounter it that life, the greatest of all of God's gifts, is miraculously fragile. We love and miss you, Jim, the Graff family. Then it says, I, Jim's brother, would love to hear from anyone who reads this note. Please feel free to write me, Glenn Graff, at 3926 Oak Park Plaza, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45209, or email me at glenngraff at cincyrr.com. And it's basically a reef. To kind of put this in a perspective, here's the reef. And now the arch is in shade, so let me see if I can get it. <clears throat> That's actually really hard to bend over backwards. All the times I've been here, I never noticed that massive cave right across from Gray's Arch. You can kind of see an opening there, and then right above it is another one. Of course, you can't get over to it. I just never noticed it before. Again, so there's Martin's Fork. We come up Rough Trail. Over down Gray's Arch. I am right there where that red and yellow is at. So now I'm going to be heading back down along King's Branch on Rough Trail. And uh, it won't take long to get there, so when I cross that stream, I'll show you. I've taken pictures of this. Um, it's a really cool rock. I love the designs that's in it. Mother Nature's art. Um, silly me. Rolled my ankle. And not only did I roll my ankle, so I rolled my right ankle. When I rolled my right ankle, I stiffened my left leg up really quick to stop it and now my knee and my left leg is hurting and my right ankle is hurting and if you know anything about rolled ankles usually when you roll an ankle four or five hours later it will swell up so I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that therefore I'm not probably going to take too many risky things um, which when you have to cross a creek the second time it gets a little risky so I'm just going to keep walking on the main trail and uh, 
hopefully this pain goes away that's in my uh, in my knee left knee and my right ankle and I might go ahead and add that uh, when I put full weight on my left leg my leg shakes so I'm going to continue hiking and if the pain is still there in about an hour I'll take some uh, Advil or something and see if that helps so that's the plan I'm going to hike for an hour see if the pain is still there if it is I want to take some Advil and I might rest but I might, I'll probably more than likely continue hiking and I'll just keep an eye on it throughout the day and if, if it don't seem any better in two or three hours I may have to call this trip uh, short I nearly stepped on this little fella you got pretty lucky as I mentioned rough trail is up down up down up down up down um, so now I'm starting on the second hill the uphill climb I wanted to show you these uh, steps they are super narrow someone's got the wider shoulders than me I bet they have troubles getting up this This is where that cardio I do all the time comes in handy. And here's another one. Just a little ways past the first one. This one's got curves in it. Also a lot longer and a little bit steeper I think I haven't looked at my polar watch yet to see how many calories I've burned I really don't think it's near as many as I would believe I've been hiking Two hours and 58 minutes and uh, if I was to guess I would say I burned 2,000 calories and it's only been 1445 okay this is a uh, another intersection I believe I go to the left Yeah, so uh, if I go to the right, that is Rush Ridge Trail, and if I go to the left, should be, yeah, rough trail still. So this is Corrosion Cove. There's actually someone up there camping, so I ain't going to go any further. This is pretty sweet. Of course you probably can't tell that from here to the base of that tree is probably 12 foot. And looking from the other way. Pretty steep. Another massive rock shutter. See how red the water is?
this has actually been a little tough section of the trail here. Um, come down a pretty steep grade. I'm trying to avoid all the mud, which I tested it to see you know, how soft it was if I would sink. I pushed a uh, stick about three feet into the ground with no effort. Okay, so uh, from my video last week, now I'm at the entry to Hanson's Point. Right up here is going to be a junction. I just passed that little green dot right there, the little side trail. So I'm going to hike up just a little bit and I'll come to Shotawi. So it's 1.3 miles that I'm going to hike over this little section right here. And then when I get to here, I'm going to go to the right and stay on rough trail. So this is the junction I was talking about. Rough trail goes to the left here toward Chimney Top Road and the right goes to Pitchum Tight Trail, Tunnel Ridge Road. So I'm going left and of course on this little 1.3 mile section of trail we get this awesome view and then coming up right after this will be Signature Rock which also has a pretty awesome view as long as you don't look down and see all the graffiti which is how it got its name and this in fact is Signature Rock I'll show you all the bad But then you got this view. If you're hearing something that sounds like a trekking pole, I actually picked up a uh, stick on the trail um, to help me with my leg disability. Uh, again, I'm not sure if it was the stick that helped, the Advil that helped, or all the extra water, but. I'm definitely moving along much faster now. Even going downhill. Okay, so this is the junction where Chimney Top, or uh, I'm sorry, Rough Trail goes to the right toward Chimney Top Road. Chitali Trace it goes to the left over toward the suspension bridge. Where that yellow dot's at, so I'm going to go toward Rough Trail there which will be towards Stereo Cove. Okay, so here Rough Trail goes to the left and then Kuma Ridge heads off back to the right. Um, so I'm going to cross this creek here and I'll be at Chimney Top Road in somewhere between a half and three quarter of a mile. Okay, this is a chimney top road. I come out over there. I'm going back in right here. Um, says I've got about 1.8 miles left to go.
respect rock shelters. So uh, when you get to the second road, this is uh, actually Chimney Top Road. The, uh, the first road is, isn't really a road, it's actually just called the Rough Trail Parking Area. So, uh, still about 1.7 miles left to go. I'm not sure if this is a cave or just a dark spot, but kind of looked like a cave. Eh, I guess not. Still pretty cool rock. Typical of other rocks at the gorge. Just out in the middle of nowhere, you come around the corner and there they are. Goes back in there pretty far. Not really a cave though. More like a rock shelter, I guess. Wow. is extended. Sorry the camera's so shaky. This uh I had to switch batteries to my battery that was for tomorrow. And uh by doing that it's a high capacity battery and it's much thicker. The downside is I have no way of knowing what the hell ah. that's messing with my head made me think there was something in there um, this is just amazing I actually see some climbers rope <laughs> some climbers uh, I'm sorry, powder. Looks like someone's made a route right there. I don't know what this area is called, but this is actually really cool. back there we go far enough to get it all huh. I wonder if I can get a picture of me standing up there So I'm uh, roughly six miles in. Um, watch says I've burned 4,500 calories. And I've ate a few snacks here and there, but not really anything too major. And the snacks that I had in my backpack pockets, I've ate. So now I'm looking more for something with a little more protein. Uh, Jack's Lynx turkey and cheese sounds great. And uh, there's basically four of them in this bag, so I'm gonna go ahead and take two. Probably some other things in here I could eat too. That protein bar I probably definitely need. But um, I'll do the jack slinks and then we'll see how I feel. I 
actually I might as well leave this out because I need to refill my pockets. So I've got uh, this stream here that I just come up on and looking at the map that corresponds to right right there. So I just come around that corner right there where the two creeks join and uh, I'll be following this creek up a little bit across the bridge down a little bit and I'll be at the end. And I'm probably going to turn around and try to make it to Hanson's Point. Um, I think I've got enough water to go to the end and then make it back to here. So I'm going to hold off on water for now. I must be getting pretty close to the Swifty Camp Creek. I've uh, heard cars a couple times. Um, I've now been hiking for nine hours. It is 3.09. It will take me about four hours to get back to Hanson's Point. So uh, I think I'll get there with maybe an hour and that's giving me an extra hour of daylight. Uh, hopefully I don't have the headlamp up back here. But uh, either way, that's where I'm going to go back to. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be slower or faster going back. When I get up to uh, Swifty Creek parking lot though, I'm going to douse myself in insect repellent because... My sweat has washed it all off and they're like eating me up every time I stop. So, until the next update. Well, I made it end to end with two leg injuries nine hours and 11 minutes and uh let me look at my watch stats and i'll get back 5236 calories exactly seven miles nine minutes nine hours 11 minutes so this is my view the sun's starting to set um, I ended up hiking the full length of Rough Trail and then I come back to Hanson's Point. But I am so beat I took the first spot that I could hang my hammock. I only have the tarp um, pitched on one side. I have the stakes are already in the ground for the other side. I'm not sure if it's supposed to rain tonight. I think there's like a 20% chance. And uh, I didn't really want the tarp over me. But I don't want to get wet either. So basically, as I'm laying in the hammock, this will be the view that I have. I mean, it'll be a little bit lower, obviously, but you get the idea. I'm going to have a pretty amazing sunset. Um, I think total mileage for today ended up being like 10.6 or something like that. Um, a whole bunch of calories burned um, 
I'm tired. I want to get something to eat. I'm so tired and sore that I'm not even going to fix my hot meal. I'm going to eat a few of my snacks that I have for tomorrow that's probably going to be extra anyways. So the plan is to get up and get out of here as early as possible because it's supposed to get like 94 tomorrow. And uh, basically by coming all the way back here, I cut half of the trip, um, tomorrow's trip down. So I'm already halfway back to the car uh, by, by doing that. Oh, one other thing. Because I'm ultralight, I only pack about one liter of water with me and on the way to the end of Rough Trail going towards Swifty Creek um, I, I recorded a video where the stream had like a fluorescent red something in it and basically um, between this camp spot and that first stream with the red I probably passed two or three good water sources but once I got to that first stream with a red in it every one of them after that had red in it so for about five miles I had no water that was nearly a fatal mistake and I'm going to tell you why um, I ran out of water before I got to Swifty Creek there was nobody at Swifty Quick Creek um, that I could ask if they had extra water so I had to go all the way back to Chimney Top Road um, by the time I got the Chimney Top Road my internal body temperature had gotten above 104 degrees I had stopped sweating for about an hour and a half um, I was starting to get like black you know there's like black bubbles in your eyes when you're really dehydrated I started to get those I started to lose coordination and as I was approaching chimney top road I heard a car door slam and I was probably a hundred yards away and that motivated me to really kick it up to get to the road and no sooner than I got to the road the person who had shut their car door was pulling out and I happened to flag them down and the guy told me he was a hiker they were in a group and they literally gave me a two liter bottle of water which is why that two liter bottles on there I didn't want to uh, discard it um, obviously I want to pack it out the way it's supposed to be done but uh, that literally saved my life you you have no idea um, so a lesson to be learned from that is that just because you have a water source doesn't always mean that it's a good water source and I, I shouldn't have been putting off getting water when I knew I needed water I, I should have went ahead and got you know to be safe two liters but at least a liter and uh it was uh, pretty scary, I ain't going to joke. The knee, the left knee that I overextended when I rolled the right ankle is still in pretty bad shape. The right ankle though is okay now. I haven't really had any pain out of it for the last four or five hours. But the knee is really bad. Any t but it's only when I'm going downhill. If I go uphill it's fine. Um, if I'm walking on flat ground, it's fine. It's only going downhill. My leg gets so bad that it starts shaking, the left leg. Um, because of the injuries, though, my, my total hiking time, when, like, when you read about Rough Trail, everybody says you should allow eight hours. Well, it took me nine and a half hours to do it, so I slowed down a little bit. Um, the return trip back... 
was a little even slower because I was dehydrated. So once I got hydrated, I, I really picked the speed up. But I'm not going to joke. I am I am beat. Um, it is 8.30 right now. And if, if I'm awake in a half an hour, it would really surprise me. Um, for other male hikers, I'm going to bring this up because you never hear anybody talk about this. But I'm going to tell you something. Male hikers can get chafing. Uh, you, you've heard of women whose legs touch at the thighs will get chafing from walking. And male hikers will get chafing from their, and, and forgive the term, it's really the only way I can explain it, from their nutsack hitting their thighs. Um, right now, I, I feel like someone held a fire to my balls. Um, so that that's another thing that happened today. Um, and, and that's from, believe it or not, even though I'm wearing um, evaporating and wicking materials, I sweat so much that my clothes were still wet. And anytime you have wet and friction, you get heat and blisters, and that's basically what happened. So the plan for tonight was to probably sleep in the nude with some uh, with some ointment to hopefully help that uh, burning sensation or pain. However, I just had two female hikers with two very young children walk by through the camp. Um, they're going to be setting up camp. So I don't think that it would be too wise for me to sleep nude in case they were to leave earlier than me. Um, I'll figure out something, I'm sure. But uh, again, I'm going to... I got my snack bag out. I'm going to eat some snacks for tomorrow. The protein bar is definitely important because I really burn some calories. Um, I'm hoping I can stay awake long enough to get this sunset. Looks like I got, going by the finger rule, about an hour left. Um, if I can get that sunset, I'll record some of it. And if I think of anything else, I'll record it too. But for now, bye. I kind of hate that this camcorder isn't really bringing out the orange of that sky, so I'm going to switch over to a normal camera. 